Hello and good evening to another Saturday night of Shadow Whispers in the Night. Tonight we have the most fabulous co-host with me, Robin Ramsey. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited for tonight. Super me excited too. and really happy to be back with you. Oh, I'm delighted. I love doing shows with you. We have a fantastic show tonight. We have a little bit of a surprise as well. We have a bloody awesome show tonight. We have Russell Edwards. Edwards with us tonight. He is the author of Naming Jack the Ripper. I'll give you a little bit here now. The book Naming Jack the Ripper is the most important ever written uh, on Jack the Ripper mystery with the help of scientific analysis, uh, DNA and other modern forensic techniques. Russell has made groundbreaking discoveries which will impact hugely on any future investigations into the Whitechapel murders. They provide conclusive answers to many of the most challenging mysteries surrounding the case. Now, I've always been um, interested in Jack the Ripper and, and who is he? Yeah, I think a lot of people are, are interested. They know the general things. They know, you know, that someone that, that allegedly not identified, for the mm. most part, people don't know. You know, I think that that at least, Mr. Edwards, or well, I call him Russell, has mm -hmm. come to identify who the one of the suspects as the as Jack the Ripper himself, and yeah. so I, I can't wait to get into talking to him about how he came to that conclusion and how he feels that he can prove that. I, and I'm sure it doesn't make ha people happy because there's people out there that I consider. Um, um, what is it? What did I call it? I can't see because I don't have my glasses on, but. Mm -hmm. um, uh, speculation addict addicts speculation mm -hmm. addiction you know so to, to say they he knows who it is it blows their mind because they have no idea how he came to that conclusion so i want to clear that absolutely up. anyone who's watching like it share it comment if you have any, any questions comment and uh hopefully we get through all the questions but we're not going to talk anymore <clears throat> we're going to bring our fantastic guest on russell edwards and he's going to let you know what he's doing and where he is good evening can you hear us? Your voice is... You're, you're muted. You're muted? Oh, he can't hear you, us either. You can't hear us? Oh, we were just talking. <laughs> That's too bad. Well, while you're can figuring you it out. Can you hear us? It's probably maybe a button that he is pushing. Yeah, I can, I can lip read. Are you, can you hear us? Okay, no. Can you hear us, Russell? No. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I always there, do that. Wait, I hear something. What's wrong? No, that's my dog. Can oh. you hear us, Russell? Okay. Do you want to come out and come back in? Yeah, just, I would just do it. Okay, I'm going to send you a message. Um, let me see. Okay, uh, um, hold on. And come back in okay russell i sent you a message okay okay <clears throat> yeah we were just speaking with him and everything was fine and it's funny we yeah. go on the air and he right. can't so, hear he can't talk so it's russell, just a, probably just a click okay. of a button or something no so anyway. as you can see russell is not in in in, in at home but where is he tonight no, he's not he's no not unless he lives lives in his car i don't think so <laughs> a little bit of a preview the, the link that we have up here on the side that's the link to his book naming jack the ripper i have bought it today so i'm looking forward to reading that on the train and people reading what seeing what book i'm reading uh eric hello how are you doing anthony how are you doing hope you all is well uh kimmy great name kimmy corpse what a wonderful kimmy, name kimmy how you hey y'all hey y'all you can say that better than me Rob, Rob, robbie robin what is wrong hi y'all nice that's okay i called you jennifer and you just called me robbie it's okay like we're like, we're excited that's why because uh russell edwards is hi louise has, has made a life's work he spent you know a, a couple of decades you hey, know boy. there he is we're good oh so we it's live yes ladies and gentlemen russell edwards so welcome, 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 Russell. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your time. We know you're busy. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, would you like to tell everyone where you are tonight? 
So I thought this is uh, the very first time I've ever done this as an interview, as I'm actually live at one of the real murder scenes. Um, as you well know, there's so many people around the world that hear the story but don't know the truth. Um, and what I did was to make sure that I went and found the truth. And wow. sort of adventure for 20 years. I'm very happy to be in the situation I am now. But I'm going to turn the camera around because I'm actually standing where the photograph was taken, which is the only historic photograph of the third murder scene of Jack the Ripper and that of Elizabeth Stride. I'll bring this up. That's just crazy. I'm trying to bring that. I'm trying to bring that up uh, bigger so people can see that one better. Sure. Let me the gateway see over there is where the gateway worthy murder happened. Oh, here we go. Um, and again, it's all it's a school now, a schoolyard. I'm trying to bring this up a little bit better that you, we can see, I can see that picture better. Yeah. Um, why is it not letting me bring it up? Everything's happening tonight. What's happening? But we can see it's still fine here. I'm still trying to work on that, but. Well, I can go through it with, people could de yeah. definitely. But this is always the case. Trust me, there's been loads of glitches over the years with this story. But it's interesting because this, this place I've been on two separate occasions, once with a, an exceptionally talented uh, paranormal team and they did a, they had a, a portal and we heard a voice saying i'm from sweden um, and i'm going to be standing there shortly they took some photographs and lo and behold in the photographs they saw uh, images of people uh, hiding behind the gate and the yeah. actual like the um uh, the silhouette not the silhouette in, uh, where, where the body lay oh, um, really yeah, and then I brought a friend of mine uh, just to do a brief uh, sh uh, a brief talk on the, the murder scene. And if you look at it, you'll see a black, uh, like a black shadow going to the wall behind me. So on oh all the other, gosh. but it does here. So if anything really is to happen at all in any if ever guys ever come here, this is where it will be. Wow, I'm just trying to get trying to get that up a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm really excited the fact that you did uh, use a team to go in and, and try to find um, some other alternative evidence. I didn't know that you were into that at all. And that's kind of exciting to us because I know Jenny's show for the most part does par paranormal um, yeah. topics. And so I'm really glad that there's a little bit of crossover in that. And mm -hmm. um, what did you, do you have any feelings? Like, did you, um, uh, did it, it hit me, you in a certain way? No. Um, not at all. I've never ever felt anything whatsoever personally. Mm -hmm. Lots of people have come with me. Lots of psychic ladies they smell their uh, taste of the metallic, uh, the metal taste of blood. Mm -hmm. uh, had people stand here and they saw what happened. Uh, a lovely lady called Liz. She actually lived at that moment and uh, 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 she went white, white as a sheet and her lips went blue. Um, and she said, He's sick. And she revealed something that I don't know if it's good for your listeners or not, but it was very intense what she told me. In fact, right. where I'm standing right now is, I mean, we get into the story, but I'm standing where the eyewitness Israel Swartz stood oh. watching um, Aaron right. Kismin attacking Elizabeth Stride at, at literally at this. This is how far away he stood. And it, the man, the Ripper, was attacking Elizabeth Stride just there. My God! The gateway where he cuts her throat. Oh my God! But it's you see how close it is. Yeah. So he, gave, he gave a perfect description. Is that the picture what that I had from earlier? Is that that's not the one? That's not the corner one yet. No. No, no. no. I'm actually at the scene now. It's not just. So literally there. That's where oh, we saw that earlier on, where there's a um, there's a what's it, a pothole up there. There's a, yeah, a drain. Yeah. Great. That's where just between that wall and the fountain on the right hand yeah, side. Just that's there, exactly right. That's where she was murdered. Yeah. And, yeah. and now that drain, that grate, that was um, was a still was it there during <clears throat> when that happened, or yeah, is it a newer? That, not, that, not that particular drain, but there was. Hmm. Uh, yeah, there was like a, a drain pipe at the side, so it would have gone into some sewage there. So there was some sort of okay. Yeah, okay. That, that's it was okay. there, and there was um, this where there's just fencing and all these new tile blocks going up. There was a wall, and that was the side build, the side wall of the Jewish Men's Working Club, 
which is where Israel Schwartz went to get his wife and some people to help him because he realised he'd found um, a murdered woman right there. That's and just... It it's... What, that, that, what, um, what date was that? Was that the... Okay. That was the night of the 29th of September, 1888. Oh, going into the hour of the 30th. Going into There's, the 30th. Yeah. So this is misconception of dates. So yeah. consider, so you're going out to murder on the 29th of September, but you're yeah. actually in the middle of the night. So, you know, for him, it was it, the significance of the date was the 29th, but it was like in the first hour. So this counted as the 30th. And in the archives, when I did the research many years ago, it's actually documented as the 29th of September. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, that's just, <clears throat> it's crazy okay. that you're standing in the spot of where, it happened yeah. and the same yeah. location we're standing we're standing right in the spot where the attack took place this is where i am wow that's just yeah Jesus. But, but if you like i can give you this massive revelation of um because i obviously knew where he lived at the time of the murders i'm very happy to take you there it's only a Would minute you? here Could you do that? I, yeah and as i do it i'll tell you the story Yep. So are, we, are we going to say his name, the person that you... I am Ari Kuzminski. Okay, Kuzminski. Yeah. Um, do you think that he frequented that uh, Jewish men's club? And is there, are there any records of who the members were or that sort of thing, you think, with that club? Well, that's very Maybe. interesting. Because he definitely knew about the club because his mm -hmm. wolf at one point lived two doors down. Mm -hmm. um, and his uh -huh. brother wolf used to care for him so his brother used to look after him i'm wondering if those records could be researched that's really what i'm uh, I, when, when you said that it was right outside uh that it just made me think are there yeah. records did they keep a log of who was a member uh well, that's I, interesting you know. yeah but mm -hmm. you know again even if he was it, you know that wouldn't that, that's sort of circumstantial evidence mm -hmm. not, not it is way. it is but it'd be I'd well put there. it together with everything else. It would just be a nice uh, tidbit. Another, I oh, see yeah. another mm -hmm. They did say yeah. that the the, the, um, the suspects would have been several people. Obviously, have been suggested as uh, possible suspects over the years, including a royal family yeah. member or a Polish immigrant. Well, the Polish immigrant is Aaron Kosminski. That's the, the member yeah, of the royal family was Prince Alexander. Now, Prince Albert Victor wasn't even in Whitechapel at the time of the murders. He was with Queen Victoria in Balmoral. So you've okay. got the Queen as your ally, and Prince Albert Victor was never, ever uh, Jack the Ripper. But That's it's a fantastic imagine. romance of this story. You know, you think, oh, it was the Prince and it's a big cover. Right. Well, I know it's a lot more simple story, but the people want this, they want this dream of this story. And I'm going to cross. Mm -hmm. And okay, believe be careful. It's not that um, it's, it's just not that big, you know. Yeah, people love sensationalism. That's for yeah. sure. I know. And for a, for a, for a while, you would hear every now and then that it had to be um, a doctor in training or someone who was trying to, you know, map the anatomy of the human body. And I thought that is not a doctor in training because even then, when they would get uh, the corpses or whatever, they would take it to a place where they could actually look and take the body apart they didn't just um murder someone and go oh, i guess i learned something about medicine today so i never thought that was uh plausible at all never well since i brought my book out um in 2014 i've done a huge amount mm -hmm. more research and i can tell you at this point we can categorically state he did have anatomical knowledge nice. that's coming out in the book but what i do want to show you is if I turn this camera around, you see the white light over there? Yes. Can you see the red light? Yep. Yep, okay. That's where Kosminski lived. Wow. There. Now, the reason why I'm showing you, because if I turn it around again from there, I'm gonna go around to Greenfield Road, and over there is the murder scene of Burner Street. God, he kept it. From his front door. He kept everything close and right beside him. And I, I would have read as well that um, they weren't premeditated 
murder. They were yes. full of the moment. It was definitely premeditated. Wow. And the reason for that was the murder dates, which was the significance of the pattern on the shawl, which was Nicol Mastasi's. And that's really what, this, what got me into this story. Uh, mm. Because um, I literally didn't, I'd been in here since uh, 1989. And for 11 years, I didn't know the significance of Whitechapel. You know, I, it, it didn't cross my mind. And then I saw a film called From Hell. Aye. And in that, I did a river tour, and lo and behold, it's where I've been in this very dark, I don't know why I like dark, gloomy places, but... We all know. do. <laughs> yeah. You're among place. friends. Yeah. <laughs> What's this? That's called Elizabeth Stride Street here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. It's like a, a testimony for, for those that care. Um, yeah. She's still remembered. Because yeah. you remember the residents of today, like, you know, as I say, 11 years, I didn't know. These people here living on this street, I bet you half of them don't know at all. So it's yeah. good that she's remembered in some little way. Absolutely, absolutely. You know? But literally, I'm walking in the footsteps. Oh, gosh. The murderer going to commit a murder. These are the original cobbles. Oh, gosh, really? It's not just mind blowing. Yeah, they're the original it couples. Is. It's not just mind blowing. It is. I would be all on my hands and knees touching London, the street. Yeah. All of the UK, they've just they've just tarmacked yeah. over the cobbles. They're still underneath. Wow. So I'm now going to show you. Just we stood there only what a minute ago, two minutes ago. Yeah. And I'll show you just how close the murder scene actually was. Now we did this for a specific reason, because this is on the outskirts. Of Whitechapel, well, say outskirts of Whitechapel. This is called Mile End Old Town, so it's a little mm. region, a little bit away. So all the murders happened over, um, I would say, ten minutes um, west of here. And there we oh, are. Ten minutes uh, walking, walking ten minutes. Walked, you can see how quick it is from door to door. Mm. It, it, that's just madness. Is that the gates we looked at? No, that's not the gates we looked yeah, at. That's the gates, there we is are. That the gates? Is that the one I yeah. that's the one I have the yeah. picture of, is it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, let me frame. put the picture up. This is what I used to look like. This is at the corner, isn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna go there to give you the comparison. All oh, right, so right. I, yeah, yeah, you're right. That way that picture, that's it. So do you see the big house? Yeah. With with yes. the cartwheel on the wall. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That wall. Was where I'm pointing the camera to now. If the wall was there, the cartwheel was there. So oh my that gosh. Gateway, that's the gateway here. Okay. And that's that... the location of the drain and the torso? Yeah, the body, yeah. Okay. That... I was thinking as well, because he had taken um he had taken body parts such as the uh gosh, the the organs, he took the organs, several organs uh, from, yeah. go ahead. He did, he took he took body parts from the victims. Would they be for uh, trophies, if I can say the word trophies? Yes. Um, again, at this point, there's, there's stuff I can't, I can reveal and stuff I can't. Yeah, that's understandable, yeah. But for now, I would say yes for trophies, because it's what a mystery, why, why take the body parts? But we yeah. know killers do keep trophies of the victims albeit you know they're normally like a, a ring or a shoe or you know mm. clothes this is yeah body parts for him were the uh, parts consistent were they the same parts over uh, and over well, well on the first victim polly nichols so we murdered polly nichols on the 31st of august 1888 and her, her, her bowels were protruding but he didn't take any of her body parts okay. well as you know serial killers they escalate in the uh, uh, the violence by <laughs> One week later, on the 8th of September, 1888, where he murdered Annie Chapman in mm -hmm. the back of 29 Hanbury Street, he, he, um, he disemboweled, they took a whole front flap of skin from a, uh, just the bottom of a rib cage right down to her private parts, put the skin okay. to one side, took her intestines, threw it over her right shoulder, and he took her uterus with him. The third oh. one, the third one where we are now, he was interrupted by a guy called Louis Dean Schutz. So he, he, he cut her throat and didn't have a chance to take any uh, body parts or perform his ritualistic right. murder. Within 45 minutes of us standing here, he he, he murdered Catherine Eddowes. Yeah. 
not only did he butcher her, but he took um, her kidney and her uterus. And by the and time he got to Mary Kelly, he basically he destroyed her completely. And we know we know that she, we, a heart wasn't found. Was never. So we think look at her heart. And I, 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 when I was reading through them, he's cut every one of their necks. That's how he started. He just instead of you know instead of suffocation or strangulation or anything like that, he cut uh, all their necks. Uh, oh. Oh. Well, yes and no. Uh, he did strangle them, which is why the blood there wasn't blood arterial blood spatter. So all of the atrocities he committed was post mortem. So it was after they were dead. Mm. So that's, oh that's my gosh. rule of thumb. So what I'm going to do because it's absolutely freezing, believe it or not, in the evening, in the summer. Get in that car. I know. Oh. So he. So like I said earlier on, he's a bit of a clever man that he didn't cut their throats when they were alive because of blood splatter. He strangled them first and then cut their throat after they had passed away. Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm, I I'm with I don't mean in a good way, you know? Yeah. 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 Again, when you... Your voice is going again? Step what he did. Oh, you're back. Oh, oh right, I'm here. How much? Are you on the, you on the, the car? car? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you can't you can't sidestep what he did. Now this mystery of Jack the Ripper that's been eternal since 1888. Well, I, well, we did solve it in 2014, but the people just don't want to believe he's been found. Mm. You know, it, it's this. It's just this. This our biggest who done it in the UK, and people just can't accept that he's been uh, that he's been found. But it's been perpetuated, and it's been. Um, sensationalized since it, it, it the murders happened and really again for me it was justice for the families like i was with she's a very very dear friend of mine now and um, she's the great 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 granddaughter of catherine those the fourth, fourth murder victim and i was with her last week and you know i said look you mean so much to me for what she did because she gave me a dna because she's the maternal down the maternal line which is the only yeah. way we could get her, the right dna you know what what side what what's really not really still even today it's still jack the ripper but actually it's not it's polly nichols it's annie chapman it's elizabeth stride it's Catherine eddowes and mary jane kelly these are five women that fell on hard times that were butchered by a maniac and the name jack the ripper did not link he had no control over that name that was just given by a letter from the dear boss letter that was written by a journalist and that's been attached. So it's the name that's been attached. And with that, Jack the Ripper is a bit like the top hat and tails with the Gladstone bag. So he falls into that era of Dracula, Frankenstein, mm -hmm. the mummy, and the werewolf. Where, but, oh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is really significant in this story, believe it or not. Um, but when you, that's who he really... People think that he's like this fantasy figure, but he's not. They are fantasy figures, obviously based on characters before they were created. But Jack the Ripper was actually given to a name of a man that literally brutalised women in a most severe way. And and where did the name Jack? Um, probably a silly question. Where did the name Jack come from? Jack the Ripper. Well, it was like this jolly. There was this um, in the early nineteenth century. There was this murderer called that he escaped, and he said, "How could you do this?" Because it was like a high walls, and they called him Spring Heel Jack. And then there was a Jolly Jack Tar, so it was this Jack name that has been there for through the 19th century. And to be honest, to give such a, to create such a sensational name, Jack the Ripper. You know, imagine being the guy, the reporter that made that, that created that, and not getting any uh, recognition for it. Yeah, it's serious. It's just, and even when I was going through uh, letters tonight, and they, and I know we were talking about it beforehand, and we we're going through the letters, uh, and I had some here to put up. Um, yeah. But and I was, I kind of had to stop for a second after I read some of them, like warped, literally warped, minded. Yeah. But um, were they him? No, um, no, no letters were written by the murderer himself. The only one that I think that they could have been written by him, but I don't know how we could prove it, was the from hell letter 
that was sent to George Lusk, head of the Vigilance Committee, on the 16th of October, 1888, and I had half a kidney with it. Oh, because he, and that was like two, two and a half weeks after the murder of Catherine Eddowes, and we know that he took Catherine Eddowes' kidney with him. Okay, so he saved half of it as a trophy. He turned the other half over so he could get some sort of recognition. And the other mm -hmm. letters were written by news people trying to sell papers, more than likely, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and just miscellaneous uh, miscreants is the best way to put it. Okay. When we look at the Yorkshire, so in, in the UK in the 70s, there was another murder called the Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sutcliffe. And there was a man that wrote three Ripper letters and he was signed Jack the Ripper. It turned out they were written by St. Peter Sutcliffe, and eventually they caught that man, and it did a, it, a, a voice recording that set the police off on a different trail, and it was called Wearside Jack, and again, Jack straight away, um, and he caused three or four more, more murders, because he, and he went to prison for that. So if these people were, were sending these random letters back then, and they were caught, obviously it could never be caught, um, you know, they would be prosecuted for that. Oh, sorry, I'm me talking the microphone off. I have what I think is the hell letter. I'm going to bring it up to see if it's the right one. I say that's the one. That's the only one not signed Jack the Ripper. I'm trying to read it. Yes, I yes. then do have yes. the kidney I took from one woman. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, took, I, 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 I took from... Um, um, yeah, um, yeah. Preserved, preserved it, preserved it. Or preserved um, it, and then ate yeah. it. And I, and I mm -hmm. took a piece and ate it. It was, it, it was very nice. Um, I'm, well, I can't really. It, do you see the way the the, the writing is done? By me and something. The jaw. Uh, show, uh, uh, so, so show the bloody life that that uh, that took it. If only you would wait a little longer. Signed. Catch me if you can, Mr. Lusk. Oh. You see, that is... Oh, the Lord. <laughs> that is... No, he was, he was taunting, so that's a classic serial killer move, too, when they're not getting um, the excitement from the, the chase as are being chased that they mm. really want. So that's a definitely a, ta a huge taunt. Just taunt and yeah, I, I, and to catch me if you can. Yeah. I completely agree. In fact, if you look at BTK, um, you know, where uh, Dennis Rader, he did the same thing years after and that's how he got yes. caught. Yes. Because part of them and people speculate on this, of course, part of them wants, to be caught they want to be stopped um but uh, you know because they're caught up in the cycle like you're seeing the serial killer cycle where they escalate and escalate and so i'm wondering if if you had once again with the research aspect if you had any access i know it'd be almost impossible to do to go back and find any police records of just um attacks or brutal brutality towards uh the prostitutes that kind of led him up because he didn't just walk out one day and say i'm going to cut, strangle someone cut their throat and take their organs probably there was some precursors to that before it happened and because they were women or prostitutes or both most uh, that they most likely weren't, weren't even reported right those precursors probably weren't even reported but they that's don't... very interesting point uh, uh, that the, what i was like to say here was there was a, a murder three weeks before the first acknowledged ripper murder and that was of Martha Tabram, and that was a completely different MO. In fact, she was she was stabbed thirty nine times. I strongly believe, yeah, I strongly believe she was his first attempt okay. at, at, a, at a murder. Um, there was another one. The White there was eleven Whitechapel murders, five attributed to him. Um, but really, we think Martha was his victim. Uh, there was another one at the third of April, Emma Smith, but that that was an attack, and it was sort of. Uh, there, were, there was these high risk guys sort of trying to get any money off the prostitutes. And I think that was Emma Smith was a victim of that. There was one before that called Fairy Faye. But to be honest, you're absolutely right. Because Whitechapel, you've got to remember this was a very violent, impoverished area. Mm -hmm. The attacks on women were commonplace and, uh, you know, a lot not reported. Yeah. Because they wouldn't right. do anything about it anyway. Does anybody know where he's buried? 
Of course. Where is he buried? I know exactly, I know exactly where he's buried. Do you? So much so, a few years ago, when my children were little, I took them to the cemetery and said, do you want to go and see the grave of Jeff the Ritter? And the pair of them run. And I said, I, I told him exactly where he was. And he stood there. And he was like, yeah, where's Jeff the Ritter? And then when he stood there, they realised the, the sort of the, the weight of mm-hmm. standing at this man's grave. My you know. gosh. I'm going over. Robin, you need to get a plane ticket over. Oh. We have to go okay. over. And I'll, Lou and Niall will have to come over with me as well. And then we'll have to go for a weekend trip. I know, I'm not saying weekend trip is a good trip, but something that we're interested in, and it's real history. It is. Yeah. It's real history. And there's other women as well. Um, sorry, there's other women as well. There's Man, uh, uh, Anne, uh, Mary Ann Nichols. Um, yeah. Anne, Polly. Anne her Stephanie. nickname was Polly. Polly. Her, name was, her nickname was Polly. Yeah, Polly Nichols, yeah. Uh, we have Anne Chapman, we have uh, Catherine Stride, Catherine, oh, Elizabeth Stride, no. sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, Catherine Eddowes and Mary Jane Kelly. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. All within a 10 week period. How did he? I mean, we know back in the day, as forensic scientists, as we know now, which is why um, he has been discovered, you just look like for, looking for a needle in a haystack. Right. You know, you wouldn't have then what we have now. Right. I, I would attribute, okay, maybe one extra murder was coincidence, but in a 10 week period, that pattern, how, you know, he was practicing, he was getting up his nerve, he was running that cycle, and he was calming down enough to be able to start taking organs and that sort of thing, probably. And, and yeah. how do we know that he had schizophrenia? Uh, that was documented. Documented. Well, yeah, that's, that's uh-huh. He was he was put in Coney Hatch Asylum. Yeah, in fact, I drove past it today. Um, there's no part of my life that's not linked to this story. I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. So, if we just go back to the five murders, yeah. the MO was the same. Okay. The way he laid them out in a specific manner, you know, cutting the throats, uh, intestines over the shoulder, uh, body parts taken. So we know he he did those five. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, but again, the, the big question. A trademark, yeah. The, the, the big question is, what happened to him? You know, yeah. so many people go, you know, well, what did happen to him? What I know, you know, and the thing is, so did the police at the time. So shortly after the murder of Mary Jane Kelly, because basically Kuzminski was looked after by his older brother, Wolf. Now, Wolf was five years older, mm-hmm. and his brother Isaac was nearly 15 years older. So Isaac Kuzminski didn't really live anyway. He was under the care of his brother, Wolf. Um, and Wolf's wife was Betsy, and he attacked Betsy with a knife. So then he was, it, they'd had enough, because they knew it was him. Um, there's an interesting point to this. So where I'm standing right now, and it's quite spooky as I do this, but if I turn around now where that woman is... <gasps> no, oh okay. God. What I'm going to tell you is this. Oh, as, as Israel Swartz was watching Kosminski attack Elizabeth Stride, hmm. there was a man standing where I just showed you, smoking a pipe, watching... The mystery to me is, was that his brother? It's, oh. it's one of these things we'll never know. We'll never know. But it's sort of like a case animal let loose, come back in. Yeah. But really, um, he, he was he was looked after and he, he was prone to solitary vices, which back then meant masturbation. Now, I don't know if you know, but I'm a therapist. Mm-hmm. When somebody openly masturbates, that's a term for schizophrenia. Mm-hmm. Um, and back then, when he was admitted to the asylum, he said he had mania. Um, but he heard, or, and the other thing is, um, auditory hallucinations so the word that you know somebody's telling you to do this thing yeah. which is what yeah. uh, which is what the Yorkshire Ripper tried to do but because you can hear voices that's another telltale sign of schizophrenia yeah mm-hmm. so basically he was being told to do this yeah well we, we don't know that we don't oh, yeah. know that we just know we just all we know is he had auditory hallucinations you would wonder why he stopped at five. Well, I just told you, because what happened was he got arrested, so the, the oh, brothers right. yeah. gave him up to the police, and then he was taken down to a seaside home in, in Brighton, near Brighton called Hove. Oh. And he was identified with an unhesitating ID by none other, by Israel Swartz, which is why I brought you here. So I've stood where Israel Swartz stood on that night. He's had a very good look at him, and he identified him. 
and the only problem was Israel, um, Israel Swartz, Al Arab has been scared Jewish, and Israel Swartz wouldn't testify. And because the identification wasn't a formal identification, it was what's called a confrontation. So he's just took into the room, shown him, and taken out again. That was not strong enough. It's considered a weak ID. So they couldn't prosecute him. So they had the man, he knew he was caught, but they couldn't prosecute him. Mm. So they sent him home with his brother Wolf. It says, in, in what's called the Swanson Margin alien, it gives the name Kosminski as the, as the murderer. Mm. It says he was sent home to Whitechapel with his brother. Now we know that that's the brother. With it. Well, I, I'm sort of telling tales out of school, because that's for my next book for next year. But he sent home with his brother, and he was watched day and night, and then he was put in a workhouse, mm. and then eventually sent to uh, Coley Hatch. Now it's interesting because he was allowed to walk on the streets. And the second he was walked on the streets, he was arrested. Mm -hmm. And he was okay. taken to court. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, and then uh, moving from a workhouse to an asylum, uh, there had to be incidents. It, that, that just doesn't happen. Like, oh, you're going to work every day and everything's going fine. Let's take you to an asylum. Work, work, there had to be. Workhouses weren't like that. The, the workhouse were like that. Basically, they were waiting for the the, the furore of the Ripper story to, to die down, to mm. calm down, and, and then they put him away. Okay. So Pietro mm. asks, is it possible that Jack the Ripper did not act alone, but acted with a doctor? He didn't act with a doctor. Uh, Ari Kuzminski trained as a hairdresser or barber surgeon. I believe it or not, that uh, back then, Barbers, maybe quite a bizarre thing, but surgeons and barbers used to train. The initial training was the same of the both of the both of them. Mm. Some went to be barbers, some went to be the clever ones were surgeons. The others not so bright went to be barbers. So he had anatomical knowledge. Right. Because, because barbers completed a lot of minor, more of the minor medical things yeah. that you had to do anyway, all the way to pulling your teeth. And that stuff. Mm. Yeah, just one second, ladies. Yeah, yeah, go for it, go sure. for it. Well, it's really highly interesting in that whole description of the cycle, you know, the, the cycle of a serial killer makes me, one thing that really is interesting to me is the fact that his brothers took care of him, that their brothers were, that his brothers were so much older, they probably watched strange, what they would consider strange behavior, behavior from the time he was little. And back then you didn't say, oh, I need help for my little brother. You, mm -hmm. you hid it, you covered it up. You didn't want to be embarrassed. You didn't want the neighbors to know. You didn't want to become ostracized, right? Because of your strange um, family member. So they might have yeah. seen a lot more than we will ever know. That would be an interesting yeah. Yeah. You know, fiction to yeah. write on fiction to write on the side. But yeah, that's, that's I wonder about that. Mm -hmm. the, uh, what motivated you to write a book about Jack the Ripper? Uh, because I wanted to tell, get the, the truth finally told. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I started. So when I just when I've been here for eleven years, because I have been here for, from eighty nine to today, and in the nineties, I used to bring all my corporate clients to take for a courier brick lane, which is in, it's just here, literally oh. uh, two minutes down the road. And then when I saw the film from Hell, the Johnny Depp film, that's mm. the that's what made me think, oh, bloody hell, Jack the Ripper, the East End. I said, I wonder where that was. And when I went on that very first Ripper tour, I was, I'd use the words bugger me, which we say in England, but mm -hmm. what I would say was, lo and behold, all these places, the Ten Bells Pub, uh, Fournier Street, Brick Lane, all of these places were all linked to the story. I think, oh okay. my God. And because I do have a unique way of thinking, because I've always worked for myself, I've never really been employed by anybody. And I don't believe in just picking up a book and reading somebody's second hand story. It's their, it's their interpretation of the truth, not the truth. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? I, I watched the film from Hell on the Friday. I went on a ripper tour on the Saturday. And on Monday, I called Scotland Yard. And on the Tuesday, I was at the Metropolitan Archives actually looking at the case. God, God. So I, I realized, I, I, yeah, I am very highly motivated here. Yeah. Um, back, back then, uh, what I did was I realized, and I was grown up an adult enough to know, that everybody's poured over this story and this research and there's mm. nothing new I was going to find. Yeah. So I, I left it. I left it there. And I used to come down on the murder dates, bring friends, we'd have a curry. Um, and then in 2007, in the March, my mum called me, said, Russ, do you know there's um, 
a shawl that was taken from the fourth murder scene up for sale mm-hmm. at an oh, auction. Yeah. yeah. And that's in Bay St. Edmunds, and I lived in Newmarket, and that's about half an hour away. Mm. So my my wife, we're well divorced, I've been divorced just after this story, believe it or not. She said, you're not having that. So it was a challenge. So I had to find a reason to buy that shawl or to show any interest. And I found it. And the, the, the link of the shawl and the murders was the pattern of Michaelmas daisies. And Michaelmas is celebrated on the 29th of September and the 8th of November. And guess what? Jack the Ripper went out and he murdered two women on the night of the 29th of September. And he murdered Mary J. Kelly on the night of the 8th of November. And immediately, wow. that's the reason. So I, what I did was uh, I realised the shawl and I bought it. And I... I realised the shawl had been in Scotland Yard through the 90s. And they mm. didn't believe it, so they gave it back to the original owner, who I bought it from. Yeah. And the owner is not just some random person. He's the great-great-grand-nephew of um, an acting sergeant that was on undercover duties in Major Square on the night. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, anyway um, that really got me... That, that, that shawl got me hooked. And it, the fact of it's got blood on it, and it's got... Uh, what I thought was bleach, but it's actually turned out to be semen. Um, right. So it's got body tissue on there. Mm. So I was busy being a dad. I had a, a very big companies at the time. So I put it off to when I sold all my companies in 2008. And I started in earnest to see if because I've got anything that could be tangible or linked to the story, I'll go for it. Mm. And that's where three years later, that's where I meet my very dear friend. He's more like my older brother. I say all day, if he's listening, younger brother. <laughs> I was having dinner with him the other day, and he's a genius. And uh, I did have another set, two sets of scientists getting involved, and they, they certainly aren't as, as um, switched on as him by, by, a, by a country mile, as we say in the UK. He managed yeah. to extract, but he said to me, he said, the blood spatter is arterial blood spatter. There's only three types, bludgeon, gunshot, and uh, uh, arterial. Mm-hmm. So it, someone's had the throat cut and it's all over the shawl as a pattern. He mm-hmm. said, there's body parts been taken off and put on that shawl. And he said, they can't be forged. And a semen on it is what he told me. And that's the exact MO. That's exactly what happened to Elizabeth Stride. And in the research, we did find a kidney cell. And Yari did find it. Dr. Yari O'Vine had found a kidney cell in that the, where the body part had been placed. Yeah. So was, what he yeah. said to me. Yeah. I've so seen the shawl. I remember you were on a show with friends. I seen the show. You were on a, you were on a, a show one night, about yeah. two years ago, with uh, yeah. Jared in York, and you had the show there, and I seen it, and I seen the stains yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It really, so yeah. Like, I did that because people don't believe me. You see, so I thought, well, look, there it yeah. is. You know, it's right in front yeah. of your face. Yeah. Make up all the stories that you do about me, which they do even on Wikipedia. Make up of all course. these nonsense stories because I don't care. We've got the story. Uh, yeah. We've got to it. So the other thing, which is uh, a big thing from another ridiculous scientist, said about contamination. Well, mm. Yari managed to extract the samples he used, embedded in the weave between mm. the, the, the uh, yeah. Fibers. top and bottom. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So he didn't just take from the top, he got it embedded in the weave, which eliminated mm-hmm. all the contamination. Aye, so then definitely. what when he got DNA um from that from that the blood spatter uh, from that shawl, um he asked me to go and trace a direct female living descendant mm-hmm. uh, and ask her for a sample and see if we can match it, which it took me a while and I did. And she was the lady I was with last week, who again when, I, when we solved this properly, I didn't just go to the press and say this. We waited for six months before we did anything. Mm. What, I did, what I did was I got in my car and I drove down to a house. We met in a pub and I told, she was the first person I told. Because she oh, was her, God. you know. How did she yeah. feel when you told her? How did she feel? Like, I mean, I know it obviously devastated, but look, what was, what, what, what happened? The, 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 the one thing, okay. We have these moments, so I believe there's only certain heaven moments in our lives. This is one of them, you know, being a father, watching your baby being born, for example. Mm. Uh, well, Karen did. She held me, she hugged me really tight, and she she just looked at me and she went, thank you. That's just... And she that's like, just That was worth the journey in itself. Absolutely. Um, hard. Yeah, like, she's, really one, really she, really. 
I've been lucky because the people in my life through this story all stayed with me and they're genuinely lovely people. And Karen's mm. right at the top. She's lovely. That's so amazing. we got the match. But then we thought, well, okay, we've got a match. But that's just, it was always called the Edo Shaw. So I said, well, what can we do with that? Anyway, um, my agent said to me, well, that's not good. That's not enough. You need to go further. So he said, can you date the shawl? Because someone will say it's a, a, it's a fake. Mm-hmm. And we dated the shawl and we did what's called mass spectrometry. It's a scientific technique that breaks all the elements and we could find out exactly where and when it was made. So number one, the shawl was made in Eastern Europe and not in Whitechapel because the Spitalfield silk wasn't made here. And mm-hmm. the other thing was the dye on the shawl came from um, St. Petersburg in Northern Russia. Now we know that Poland and Prussia are all very, very linked. And we knew that, that, that the whole family of Kosminski's, except for him yeah. and a few others, were master tailors. So you're like, well, there you go. There's the link. So all of a sudden, what, what we've discovered was the silk was very expensive. Now, the fourth river victim at the fourth medicine where the shawl was, the, Catherine Eddowes had to pawn her own shoes the day before for her and her partner to get on night's DOS. So mm. she was, sorry to say this, but piss poor. As we yeah. said, I mean, very yeah. poor. Yeah. And that means, that means destitute poor, by the way. Yeah. And yeah. so mm-hmm. we knew if she had a piece of silk like that, she would have sold it. But mm. the thing is, if, she, if she'd robbed it, she would have been arrested for it. And she certainly wouldn't have been walking around the streets in it because it turned out that the dye on the shawl is water soluble. So it's pre-1854, before textiles, before synthetic dye was created. So we're lucky that we've got the shawl from about 1835 that was a rudimentary plant dye. So the samples of the blood and the semen um, sort of absorbed into the material. So mm-hmm. luck was very much on my side. Yeah. And then we worked. And my revelation on that day was, not only did I put the murder dates, why he murdered them on those days, but it turned out the shawl wasn't the victim's shawl. It was the murderer's shawl. He took it there so he could take the kidney away with him. And of course, there's not much blood spatter on any of the murder scenes. And I know he strangled them, but he didn't have much time with Catherine Eddowes because he literally, with the shawl, by the way, it's not small. It's nine foot by two and a half foot, so it's huge. Wow. But okay. you, you can crumple it. You can crumple it and put it in your pockets. Yeah. So yeah. that revelation that it was he took it to the murder scene with him made, made me focus on the semen on the shawl because there's no other person that could have deposited. Sorry, sorry yeah. about this on a Saturday. No, 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 be real, be real. You, you deposited that semen on all the time. He had to come across this uh, hurdle. The only man that could have done that was the murderer. So we focused on the DNA. Now, the, the difference is we, we can never get RNA because that deteriorates very quickly. And it's not my, so we, we were really, Yari was extremely focused on making sure he didn't mess his up. Yari is exceptionally professional and exceptionally fastidious. And I really resent anybody questioning that man's uh, ability to mm. commit so scientists. He's a, a, a revolutionary yeah. scientist. I'll just give you a couple of instances. Mm. Swedish police force adopted his techniques of scientific analysis. Mm-hmm. He's changed the law in Poland. He's changed. He, he, he solved an unsolved murder case in the 60s that's been a big one in Poland. So he's not just this random scientist. He's a really, really mm-hmm. force to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so he managed to get the DNA. We got the samples. and We got DNA through sperm head analysis. And yeah. lo and behold, we couldn't. Dig, we tried to dig Aaron Kosminski up in the Jewish community, and definitely not having that. And anyway, um, he managed to get it through his sister Matilda through the maternal line. Through, that's what he did. And everybody's asked me these millions of questions. Believe it or not, we can get you through your sixth cousin nowadays. So it's all irrelevant. This nonsense yeah. that people throw at me. And we got a hundred percent match. And on that, wow. that, that, it was in the middle of February on a Friday night at half eight when we found out. And it, at that point, when, when he said, go and check your inbox, we knew we were close. So it was either going to be yes or no. Yeah. And when yeah. I checked my inbox, there was a, there was literally, I saw the, the DNA profile matching. Oh, and i tell you what, that, that revelation of I've proven who Jack the Ripper was. And as I told you, I told Karen, <laughs> and we kept quiet for six months. And my agents told me at the very beginning of the story, everything you do, write a thousand page, a thousand words on a page, and send it to me. So that was like nearly what, uh, 2011, three and a half years. So I'd amassed enough to make a book. 
and I thought this story needs to be told. So that's yeah. why a long answer to why I wrote the book. I will have your book delivered to me tomorrow. <laughs> and which is called Naming Jack the Ripper, and you can find it, what, where can you find this book? Amazon, eBay. eBay, um, you have the link at the very top. If you all scroll up to the top, I have the link here. Actually, I'll put it up here now. There, so it is on, uh, oh, it's on Amazon and eBay. Yeah. Fantastic. I shall have mine tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And people right. go to bed well, reading the... novels, and I go to bed reading Jack, naming Jack the Ripper. Right. <laughs> naming Jack the Ripper. Well, it, it had so me right. really. I, I learned like more me. about. I learned more about mitochondrial DNA than you know, uh, just for speaking to you. Then I, I, you know, I never thought I would really need it, but now I understand how significant it is, how um, yep. accurate it can be, and you know. So I was yep. reading that the oldest mitochondrial DNA that they've successfully uh, used and and proven identity is sixty four thousand years old. So if someone doubts, yep. you know that um, that this is possible, it is absolutely possible, and it's done mm -hmm. uh, more frequently than you think. So stop doubting and uh, just believe. Stop believing. It's science. It's science. Absolutely. It doesn't care about your opinions. It's science. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Look at you. You you got his name. Yeah. Like well, you, when, I, when I discovered the murder dates and I knew the shawl had been in Scotland Yard for 10 years, I called Scotland Yard to say what I just told you. I was linked the murder dates. And a guy was called Eric McCall, Alan McCormack that was running the place. And he said to me, you know what, Russ? You've come up with the first bit of new evidence in decades. He says, I don't know why they do these tours. I don't know why they write these books. I don't know why they make these films or these documentaries. We've always known who Jack the Ripper was. And he just says it was Aaron Kosminski. So the reason why I, did, I, I followed the track pathway of Aaron Kosminski is because Scotland Yard told me. There you go. So doubt. I, mean, I, I don't Yeah. Anybody who's still doubting after that is just a... Someone who's just going to doubt, you know, anything. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just that person that's I, never going to yeah. give up. Just addicted I have another time to... a day for them. No. So yeah, just yeah. so you know, just so you know, that the, the science that Yari did was published in the French Journal of Forensic Science, and it was peer-reviewed by okay. separate scientists, and they validated all his work. Excellent. That's amazing. Golden standard peer review. That's, I, Thank I'm you. That's exactly it. That that's it. I'm looking forward to the new book as well. I'm gonna. I'll have the Absolutely. first one read within a week. Yeah. When I well, sit on my computer doing audio work and all that stuff. I just yeah. just before this just before this, I met yeah. up with my my old my old my the, the lady that used to do the tours for me, um, and I just told her what's in the new book, and she knows this story as well. You know, as, as well as me, she used to do my tours for me, and uh, she sat there with a with a jaw that hit the floor. So I'm not allowed to tell you any stuff, but. The, the, the stuff that is going to come out and what will be revealed, uh, I can't say anything, but it's worth the wait. When did you say it's coming out? Uh, March 2024. Awesome. Oh, Lordy. Yeah. That's, I can't even imagine what it could be. I'm so hey, excited. <laughs> I, want to bring it out, I want to bring it out today. It's not me that's sure. it's setting the date. It's the publisher, you know. Oh, I'm I want sure. to see it. There's a question here from Nicole Ray. Were the copycat killers similar to Jack the Ripper? Yes, yes, there were. Uh, just after, so just after the Ripper murders, uh, uh, Francis, it was it Francis Coles? There's a, there was a few, but they knew uh, Clay Pie Palace was, I think, another one. I think I've not really focused on them because there's always been on the story. But yes, there were. But the police knew they already had him. But the uh, the, the 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 wounds inflicted weren't as severe. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Different pattern, and uh, similar, but just different enough so you know that it's, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just crazy. And any, I mean, any, how do the family of the victims, they know the work that you're doing? Have any yeah. of them yeah. with you, yeah? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm good friends with lots of, lots of, um, I would just say not just that, I, I'm friends with descendants of witnesses. And I'm a very good, and a good friend of mine is, is one of his descendants as well. There was, uh, yeah. I read up as well, there that uh, several, now this is what I read now, so what you read sometimes is 
Yeah, so, yeah. So, but several of the murder victim, victims were found near the Thames River, which contributed to speculation that the killer was a sailor or a river worker. Ah, uh, very. That's a, do you know what? That's a very good one. Well, I'm sitting at the third murder scene, and you know what? We're not that clear. We're not that near to the river at all. And the and um, the answer to that is uh, no. Just simple no. But there was a guy. Okay. So there's a guy going around saying that a guy called Carl Feigenbaum, who's a sailor, was Jack the Ripper because when he was in shore in Whitechapel, it, they were the murder dates. Now, I found, I did the, so there's no stone on turn. So that mm-hmm. research is in the Whitechapel Hospital uh, Museum. And I've done that first, first hand research. And the guy that actually put that together wrote to the chief of police saying, I put this together. Jack the Ripper was a sailor. If you don't um, acknowledge me, I'm going to just go to the press, of which the response letter was, thank you for your um, interest, uh, but no, it, 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 basically, they blew him out of the water, as if to say, it, it's not a sailor, so there's the answer. Yeah, they all wanted to know who he is, who he is, and, and why not, and I, I, how old are these, what, were the women at the same age range, and I know, well, not, no, I'm saying that I know I'm not, I don't know, I've read, as as I do, Um that not all of them were prostitutes. Okay, so that's a very good point. Um, how I'm going to put this is how it really is. Mm-hmm. Now, there was a documentary with a very rude lady that, that tried to scupper the shawl, and I thought well, she doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Mm-hmm. But they tried to do a documentary saying the victims were prostitutes. Now, when we think of prostitutes, we think of women going to sell the body, and that's all they do. This mm-hmm. was not the case for our victims. They were called unfortunates for a very clear reason. And that was, they would try anything. So Martha Tabron used to sell flowers or matches. So if they, could, if they couldn't find legal employment in a day, so they lived a day-to-day business, they were forced to sell the body. So there's a difference between forced to sell your body and selling your body. So yeah. I would not say that you, you could not turn them as prostitutes. Mm. Even though it is prescribed was if not... Uh, on a, she was acknowledged as a prostitute, even said on her immigration report, occupation prostitute. She was actually, she cleaned the DOS house she was in, she got some money for that. In fact, the night she was murdered, she cleaned the DOS house and got some money out about half five on that night. Mm. Use the word unfortunate and think of forced to sell your body just to make sure you can get a meager, a meager bit of food or a bed for the night. Yeah. That's, that's what they did. Were they all? Would they have all been around the same age? Well, like, the first four were in the mid forties. The mid four were in the mid forties. There's a reason for that, which is in the next book. <clears throat> and the last victim, Mary Jane Kelly, was only twenty five. And the reason for her is because she had her own room. She didn't live in Los Angeles. She had her own room, which was okay. in Miller's Court. My goodness! So from twenty five to forty. Yeah, but that was uh, Mary J. Kelly was just opportunistic because he wanted to really, and he did. Uh, he had a good two and a half hours to do what he did to Mary. And again, oh. I what 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 the, the other thing I try I'm trying to convey here is I see these victims as human beings. So it's Mary, it's Polly, it's Annie, mm. it's Liz, it's Liz. You know, it's not Jack the Ripper victims. Yeah, so you've got to right. humanise the women, and that's what I've always tried to do: get justice. Number one, justice for the victims. Number two, put this nonsense of Jack the Ripper to bed. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Because it, it hurts. It hurts the victims' families even probably to this day. The glorification of the killer, and nobody knows the girls' names. They just, mm. and they think they're whores. Thank you. Oh, it's just Thank some you. whores. They thought, you know. Oh, you know. But he, he was really interesting. You know, that is extremely hurtful. Yeah. But th- this is the problem with serial killers: the sensationalized. If I say to you, Ted Bundy, I bet you could name a victim. If I, if I say to you, John Wayne Gacy, give us a victim, you can't. But you name the, the, yeah. the, the glorification yeah. of serial killers should not be, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer, that, that brilliant yeah. Netflix thing. Yeah. The victim, yeah. It's about the victims. And the one thing I really want to stress here, when you're a victim of a serial killer, the family, you kill the family as well. They carry yeah. this for the rest of their lives. 100 percent and even that word victim and like you said we we focus on the serial killer 
yeah. more than we do of yeah. the of the women. And I hate the word victims. <coughs> that yeah. he had, you know, he had gotten. And yeah. Yeah. Woman, oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and we absolutely I, love speculation. And you just and well, you think, you know, all oh, those poor people. That's all they you know, those poor people are non people, imaginary people, but then you start wondering, you start digging in. Now, why would somebody do, you know, what, what was he thinking? Why was he doing that? Was he, you know, and so that's why I think we all just want to know why, why, why? You just forget to name the, uh, the, the victims. So I'm wondering on his premeditation, um, was it premeditated that he was probably going to kill that night? Did he know who yes. he was going to kill or was it? We know that the murders were premeditated because the Michaelmas daisies or the date of Michaelmas gives us the 29th yes. and the 8th, so we know he went out on that day to go and commit a murder. Okay. But whether he knew the victims, because his occupation was hairdresser. Mm -hmm. And when you think of it, did he ever cut the hair? Did they ever know him? Yeah. We yeah, don't I... know. We oh, just don't so know. perhaps, yeah, spe it's speculation, obviously, but perhaps he had done something for them and he found yeah. them intriguing in that certain way. You know, you, we did, you did say there was semen on, on that shawl, so... Yeah. Uh, in that certain way, so he may have began to just uh, follow them and see what uh, what they were up to. Opportunity. Yeah. yeah. There's another question here from Nicole: whether any male victims or just females? All female. All female. Just remember, when you look at the profile of serial killers, don't forget this has been my career for 30 years. When you look at serial killers, uh, gay or homosexual, so I've got to be very careful with the with what we say nowadays. But if you're if if you're gay you're going to murder men. And you look at Dahmer, mm -hmm. you look at John Wayne Gacy for, the, yeah. for that evidence. Um, again, if you look at, um, oh, the late, the, the, I forget her name now, um, she murdered men, a female serial killer. Um, um, uh, uh, what's the other lady's name? Um, and I, oh, look, I, there's a fox. There's a fox at the murder scene. Oh, look. no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. London what's foxes, the they are. There's another lady's name, uh, Eileen yeah. Warnos. Eileen Warnos. She That's murdered her. men. I have yeah, to she say, murdered men. What, is your, what is your take in her? I, My take will probably That's not sad. be... 100%. I was going to say my take would not be uh, favourable because I think they didn't help her. They didn't listen to her. She did what she did was extremely wrong. I'm not agreeing with what she did at all. Yes, I would, I would, yeah, I, I would honestly say Ali Warnos's story is extremely tragic. Very, it very, is very sad. I, I cried at the movie and I watch her documentaries, and she'd be the one that I would yeah. be very uh, interested in. I've done a but, lot of. But she, she was insane, remember? No, she wasn't. She had the most awful. Towards the end. Happened. Don't forget, she was talking about radio waves. Um, that were set up by the government to actually yeah. control your mind. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I if we get back to, the, so you know, the, the sexual orientation of victims, uh, there's your key, you know. Hmm. I'm looking at this here now from Nat from Haunted Era. Larry Murphy's cousin David Lawler murdered Marilyn Ryan. Uh, many, the, many, the B murdered a lot together. Am I saying that right? Possible. Do you know who Larry Murphy is? No. Uh, I'm probably going to get it wrong, Nat, so you might have to write it down for me. But I do know his name. Um, I do know what he's done. I just can't say it in case I get it wrong. So, uh, But he is one of the most uh, feared men in Ireland. Uh, but Nat, what, do a little bio of him just there now so I can put it up because I forget. I, I do know who he is. And no, I would not want to. Uh, oh, here we are. Um, they went to school together, and when they got... Uh, put, uh, put, uh, <coughs> they lived together, but of course, it's all hidden, brushed under the carpet. Hmm. I don't know Interesting word, words, brushed under the carpet. I can tell you, I've solved another uh, major unsolved uh, case, and that's been brushed under the carpet. And hmm. again, I can't really say anything about that okay. uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm still on it. But brushed under the carpet, just like the Ripper case. And you find, hmm. when you really look hard enough, these unsolved murders, if you look really hard, you'll find that they've been pushed under the carpet. Yeah. yeah. And there's so many reasons for that. It could be anything from hmm. just political well, families that well, knew that, each other, yeah, you know, that sort of thing. More, it's just... Yeah, I can tell you the next book reveals all of that. Okay. 
I am just, I listen, I'm, getting your, I'm getting your book tomorrow. I, yeah. I want everything yesterday. Yeah. I cannot yeah. wait until <laughs> yeah. March 2024. I'll be PMing you saying, Russell, give me a... <laughs> <laughs> I promise. I promise. When that comes out, when you when that all comes out, uh, I doubt you'll you'll be speechless for most of it. Oh, I can't wait! I cannot wait. Let, let me just tell it's you. It's hard. This. It's hard to, it's hard to make either one of us speechless. So we're ready. I can tell you this. Aaron Kosminski was definitely Jack the Ripper. That's what I can tell you. That's amazing. Okay. That's amazing. well. If you if you end up going on a book tour or anything. Please let me know. I'll go anywhere in, in New York or yeah, anywhere in the Northeast to come see you. Well, I'd, I'd love, love to go to New York. Yes. Island. Yeah. I have a guest. I have a guest room. Come on up. <laughs> Our house Lovely. Is, Robin's house is stunning. I haven't been in it, but I have I'd had a tour around it. It is um, a house that you'd want to stay in and leave the light on. <laughs> well, you know, I was sitting here. I'm sitting here in the parlor, actually, and I'm and it was built in 1880. And I'm thinking that oh, wow. these folks, these folks mm. that lived originally in this house, were picking up the newspaper and reading about these things that were going on in Whitechapel. And yeah. I'm, and I'm wondering yeah. what uh, their thoughts and their and their discussion was. The uh, the person who built the house was the, the village dentist. And so I'm just sort of oh, wondering, you know, what you could Dr. That. William Finder, yeah. I'm just kind of wondering what they were thinking about that as I sit here. They're probably discussing it in this very room. Uh, Nicole, wow. Nicole, I'm going to put up the uh, that's the link on Amazon. Or oh, we just go into Amazon and uh, uh, and and look up uh, Russell Edwards naming the uh, Jack the Ripper. You will find it there. I did today, and, and I got it. So I will have it delivered tomorrow. So I'm so looking forward to it. Uh, my children don't care looking at me anymore, reading ghosts, books and ghosts and uh, Jack the Ripper. They're immune to it. That's, God bless them. I mean, I throw them in at the deep end to, um, you know, mm -hmm. this is what the mama's all about. I'm not a regular mother. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we like other stuff. We like other stuff. Um, have you uh, more tours coming up, Russell? Well, I did an impromptu tour. I, I only do private tours. Um, I used to do it for the general public, but I was, I was literally doing tours seven nights a week to 150 people a night, and it was just getting too oh, much. Wow. So yeah. I did that for two years, and um, I really did want to get the story out. But um, I found other ways to do that now, and that will all be coming out next year as well. Um, tours, only private bookings, um, yet once a one with me. As I say, someone this morning said, how much I gave a what I charge for a tour, yeah. and uh, he booked me, and I just did one before we did this. That's and you know what? Uh, if you could give dates to me, I can get it up on the page because I'd like to say to Lou and Niall and anybody anybody else that wants to come with me over that we can book a tour with you. Well, just book just book a date. Uh, if I'm not doing anything, I'll, I'll do the tour. Oh well, Ooh. then oh, the lot. Let me keep an eye on your inbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See you. See you in twenty minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you, I would be really sad for flying over for that. Louise, who's on my team, she's in work at the moment. She's in work until eight o'clock in the morning. She should be watching. She has, on, she has me on her big TV screen. Everyone say hi, Louise. Hi, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we can uh, organize a, a trip over to do a tour with you. Yeah, if you want, you could televise it. You could do an investigation, yeah. whatever you like. You know. Oh, come I on. Just have to say you know? the magic words. Listen, let, there's Lulu. Let me uh, talk to Lulu tonight. I hope she's watching, still watching now. I know she's busy working tonight. Um, but listen, okay. Uh, I have nothing in July. No, Louise, I think she's going to wait in July, but we'll work it out. We'll work it out. My mm. goodness. Yeah, let me leave that with sure. me and I'll, I'll get a date for you as well. Uh, one thing, uh, Larry Murphy, Murphy is number one suspect for collective murders around the missing triangle. Working in the area when Annie McCarrick went missing, he worked in Deirdre's Jacob's granny's shop. Deirdre went missing in the 90s, work, uh, working in Moon when Jojo Dillard went missing. And he's out now, isn't he, uh, Nat? He's out now. He's out. I, I, I don't know. I think I don't know this case at all. Oh, no, Natalie, I don't know Natalie, from Haunted, Natalie from Haunted Island. He's in Ireland. Well, I think he's out now, and there's, there's pictures has been you know, uh, posted around, around of where he is. Uh, live investigation, Jen. Uh, yeah, we will, uh, well, let me, let me yeah. go. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah I would like to, I'm he ready to really fly over and, and join you guys. But I, I, it's just such a enormous feat to do what you did, Russ. Mm -hmm. I just can't, it, I'm wrapping, okay. I'm trying to wrap my brain around the fact yeah. that, that you've done this. And I 100% believe that this is true and accurate and that you did figure out who the person was. Um, and um, I'm just extremely, impre extremely impressed. I mean, I think that there's this whole subset of um, us in the paranormal and, and other people that are kind of obsessed with some of these unsolved cases and we look into them, we try to research them the best we can. And even mm. ones that are really recent, we, we can't get a handle on them. And what you've done is just amazing. So I just want to say yeah. congratulations. This is Thank intense. You. Yeah. You are a man well done. A bone, like a dog with a bone. Like you want to yeah. guess the answer for everything. That's and but that's just and it gives, oh my gosh, with for the families as well. And for the ones who are interested in the history, but we wouldn't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Like you did all the work. Well, well, but as I say, I have a, a unique way of thinking. I'm a great lateral thinker. And I'll find out uh, how to overcome obstacles. And my, my experience is when something's not working, sit down, let it rest. Something will happen. Yes. You know, and that's yeah, the way it's done. There's you another know, one that, you know, uh, he's moved to England. He was released and he's moved to England. Oh. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Good luck, England. Larry Murphy has moved to England. <laughs> I don't know anything about that that uh, case. Oh, I'm like, good, good luck, England. Oh, no, I know he's notorious. He's just, uh, he's a desperate man. Um, how he got out, I have no idea. I don't know. Any, I, I hear that's just um, okay, Eric. So, uh, after this, though, what's next? Oh, thank you for the question. So, I'm in the middle of another case which again backfired uh, for a reason I can't, I can't disclose, that's but cool. only one of the meetings I had with uh, Dr. Yari Lohalan the other day is we only ever had three major unsolved cases. In, I only want to do three in my career unless mm. somebody pays me um mm. and we just started on our third and it's very very big um, oh and i'm really looking forward to doing that we are looking forward to finding out what you're doing absolutely see where we get with keep it a, we signed two you. weeks ago yeah we signed two contracts two weeks ago um what we'll be doing is when the book, new book comes out, then everybody knows exactly what's going on without. So when you look at reviews on me, when you look at what people say on, about me, just remember these are people that don't know the story, haven't done the research, haven't done the work, mm -hmm. not put the legwork in over decades, mm -hmm. and they've all got their own agenda. You know, so we talk to companies who don't want Rivet, uh, the Ripper revealed, mm -hmm. or Rip the Ripper community who don't want the Ripper revealed because they've got nothing to talk about. So yeah. I've, I've, I've read that they're just the spurious facts that they, they, they spew out. And I, I've just said, I said this on my post the other day, don't read a book and speculate who Jack the Ripper is. I, I was standing at the Metropolitan Archives the other day, I said, go in there and do the research because the answers are in there. Yeah. And you, you know. did it. Uh, oh, no. Oh no! What? Oh no! What? <laughs> comment and I, 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 you can probably read it, but I don't know if you want me to put it up. I'll put it up, but I don't know. It's just something that uh, Russell can't talk about. I don't know. Um, it's from Nat. He's not going to be able what to did, talk what's about. What's this one? Is it the Lake Mitchell think... Jody Jones case? No, no. Mm -hmm. um, all I can say is I enjoy the journey. I enjoy solving something that nobody in history can solve. The next one is bigger than Jack the Ripper, and I'm not permitted wow. to say anything. Yes, thing. I was going to say, so, uh, going to say, pardon the pun, you're killing me. But you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me too. Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> Sounds like a pattern. Well, but, if you promise to keep the secret, I'll inbox you, or I'll tell you after the show. Oh, I'll sign an NDA. <laughs> <I don't laughs> do. But when we come off live, stay there. Don't go. But when we come off the okay. live, stay there and don't okay. go. Sorry, folks. So, we are I, I, yeah as i have to so your brain is very intriguing the way it works and you said that you had a corporate life before this so you don't have to tell me who what you did but well i kind of want to know oh, what you did in so, a general way. I, I so basically before all this i had three care homes i had 155 staff i used wow. to care for the elderly that's brilliant um, i studied to be a therapist while we was doing this journey to give me something to to keep, keep me brain busy because i'm very very yes. active mentally. Yeah. 
Uh, I grew up doing the market selling teddy bears as a kid. Okay. I'm going to nick what I used to do. Yeah, but by the time I was 19, by the time I was 19, I had seven girls. I said, see, out out workers, all sewing machines working for me. Um, I supplied all, all like uh, fairgrounds and stuff. Um, And then I just had this adventure through the night, through the, through my twenties with the Ripper stuff. I set up, uh, we set up a software, um, software distribution company in the nineties. And we became the third largest distributor in the year. In the UK. So I, it, it's not the fact that it's, it's just like this is the one thing that's always confused me as a younger man is why do I? It's like I see I see the matrix. Do you know what I mean by that? Yes, I, I do. I see things different. I see mm. things differently. You know. Yeah, so, yeah, you're you know, But I'm rubbish at crosswords and I'm rubbish at puzzles. Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> How are you a Sudoku? I, 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 no chance. It's too hard yeah. for someone with my feeble brain. I tell you, ruling mass is like water. And water. <clears throat> do not mix. We do not mix. Um, yeah. uh, uh, where can people find you? If you want to... Book um, book. On Facebook. The best one is Facebook. So, Russell Stephen Edwards with a PH. Stephen with a PH. Russell Stephen Edwards on Facebook. Um, I've got a, a dedicated Ripper page called the Jack the Ripper Experience on Facebook. Um, all my details are on there. You can find me on um, the Jack the Ripper tour dot co dot UK. Um, everything about me is in name Jack the Ripper, so that's where you can find me. I'll get all of these links put up on the Shadow Whispers in the Night page mm-hmm. and my Emerald Isle Paranormal Researchers page as well, uh, and so I can share those links into all the networks that we've been on tonight. Um, sure. Just kind of... before we go, oh, yeah, no, would I you don't... like a very? Just before we go, would you like an extra special finishing treat? Around the <laughs> yeah, we love right, trains. So <laughs> what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to have to put you on. You're on hands free anyway. Okay. The car, but I'm going to put you down on the seat where I'm going to drive only two minutes from this murder scene. Okay. And where I'm going to take you is exceptionally eerie at any time, day or night. You bring us. Um, do you want to come with me to see? It? We are all absolutely. In the car with you. Like, <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Like okay. <laughs> The little creme de la creme of tonight. Of course, they're going. <laughs> said, Jen, you know, is is it visual? And I'm like, well, yeah, definitely one video. It goes because I'm at Whitechapel, and I'm like, no, no and I, no I didn't want to put it up for people to see that we are actually on the scene of Whitechapel tonight. So this was extra, extra special. A little so I, I, I'm now driving down the road where the most logical road he went to get to the fourth murder scene, which is called Fairclough Street. Uh, a, a psychic lady recommended that it would be Boyd Street, which is the parallel one to Fairclough Street. But where we're going now is a significant date that we discussed earlier, which is the 11th of September, 1889. Um, Aaron Kosminski's birthday is the 11th of September. And this is only five minutes. Not, it's, not, well, it's like 30 seconds for us in the car. But where I'm going to take you is a, a, a very, very, very eerie, spooky place. Um, and sometimes I don't know why I come here myself, but I don't know. I'm just drawn to it. Drawn to it. You're drawn okay, to so it. See, this yeah. whole thing, this whole thing, that's what I keep thinking in my mind. He's drawn to it. He's drawn to it. Like the victims come to him and they said, we need this to be resolved. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And that's why he ends up being friends with, you know, the, the victims' families and the witnesses' families and all that trauma <laughs> that he's yeah. helping to, to heal, really. To, 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 okay, so. I know that's a little metaphysical for what we're talking about, but I, I just keep feeling that, that feeling of the victims thing finally. You get the victims, get the lady's stories out so that they can put a closure to it. Yeah. Can you see this, ladies? Yes. 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 What, does it, what does it say? Oh, you have to go closer to it? I can't see that. Yeah, I can't see that. I'm going to try. I, it's a, it's, it's, I'll tell you what. Let me see if I could keep you with me. Let me just turn okay. the engine off. Okay. Okay. This this is um this is also counted as one of the Whitechapel murders. His Bluetooth is going to have to let go. His Bluetooth will let go, and then we'll hear him again. Bluetooth still in the car, Russell. Okay. Here we go. Oh, okay. Oh. Finchin Street. Your Bluetooth is in the car. Or you could turn the Bluetooth off on your phone. Okay. 
So Russ is going to log out and come back in again. Uh, Nat, let me tell you. Um, Thank you. When, I, like, when we have Russell on tonight and then Russell said, Jen, are you um, visual on the show? And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a video feed. It's live video. He said, great, because he's just, you know, finished a tour in Whitechapel. So he's going to do the interview from Whitechapel. Let me tell you. I, 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 I didn't even say it to Robin because I wanted to excite her, but then I kind of lost <laughs> it. Sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. I'm so sorry. Okay. So here's one of the ladies that. So Hi, you're, you're on a live stream. Hi, so here's a, here's a, a typical, I say, typical lady that lives in East London. Typical Hi. Hi. <laughs> so there you go. Typical. Yay! Thank you. Yes. So, so this. <laughs> so I've got. Uh, sorry, I haven't got anything. I don't. I don't carry cash, believe it or not. So here, look. Can you see the name of the street? Inchin Street. Inchin. Okay, if you go on to uh, the on to Google and type in the Pigeon Street Torso. Um, oh, let me get it. Let me get it. Pigeon Street Torso. Here we go. Yep. So down there, in one of those, see one of these arches here. Yes. On the eleventh of September, eighteen eighty nine, a woman's torso was found in one of them there. Oh, you're doing the okay. Yeah. Oh, Jackie wow. the Clipper. Jackie the Clipper. Yeah. Bring the. So, and again, the cobbles. Oh my God, the original cobbles. So I wonder if you oh. can get that that sort of. Me, I'll, get that, I'll get that picture up now. One second. Yeah. I haven't got much charge left, guys. So okay. 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 Yeah. Jump back in that car. We are going to have a little private conversation afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to get this picture up of the Pigeon Street torso, if I can find it. You got yours better there, um, Robin. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a drawing of a man standing over a... Uh, it's not like a fine. So. So, so it popped right up. It popped oh, they, had live, they had live a woman that's a, a prostitute in these things. Say that again. That was a, that's a prostitute in the East End. Yes. Oh, yeah, you, couldn't you tell? I could tell right away. I don't know why I would know that, but I did. Anyway. Oh. She, had a, she had some pizzazz. She was working that. She did. Yeah, East London. We love East London. Okay. Well, this is just on my phone. But hold I on. Hold what, it what, 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 um, you, can yeah. you hear us? Oh, you're good. Oh, yeah, you're good. I can hear you, yeah. Yeah, you're good now. I can see that now, um, Robin. Yeah, that's, that's the one. The really great arch. Yep. And there we are. The arches. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Isn't that just phenomenal? I feel so heavy. I just feel it's heavy. It's very, um, yeah, like Robin, it's very, oh, like a heavy breath kind of thing. Robin it's Toss. Yeah. It's sad. It's heavy breath. Your voice is gone again, yeah. Russell. Your voice is gone again. He's having Bluetooth fun. There he is. Bluetooth fun. Higher, higher. So yeah. what I was saying was, most people that come out with me are never bored. No. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to get a flight over without my Xanax and gin and tonic. We are <laughs> oh, and, and I bet there's a lot more than, than Jack the Ripper you can talk about. That's yeah, like no. Nice. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Nat, and, okay, and we, I've got a few people. Hopefully, they can get we can get a good tour together. Like Nat, we're gonna uh, make a date with Russell that I we can go over and do a private tour from and maybe a little investigation. So I'll talk yeah. to Russell privately and get a few dates together yeah. and see, see if we can get flights over to meet up with you. Um, that would be great. Uh, let me see what this. What did Russell think of the church of Cornwell? That was uh, that. Was that that? Isn't what Edward Stickard? Oh, what's the second? Very interesting story. Very interesting story. Okay. I admire her as an authoress. I really do, or an author. Not Edward Sickert, it was Walter Sickert. Um, what we did is uh, the team I worked with uh, did the same stamp that she did, and it turned out that the DNA on there was female. There was one in 600,000 that it could have been, but what she is completely ignoring is the fact that Walter Sickert wasn't in this country at the time of the murders. He was in France. So if you're telling me that he came over, murdered them, um, and then went back on a train in France, then 
no, but a great story, a really great story. And what, what she did for me was she linked Walter Sickin to my hometown because he performed in the Flora Pavilion in New Brighton, which is where my aunt used to perform. And I live on, and that's in the Wirral where I come from. We are going over. I'm so, listen, the stuff that you showed us tonight, I mean, you couldn't, I mean, you gave us a private tour. Yeah. That, like, you couldn't get <laughs> It was unexpected, and it was um, wow! Well, okay. It was really you know, uh, a mind blowing. I'm blown away by it. Um, wow! Thank you. And I never stuck yeah, for words. You. Let me tell you, I never stuck for words. I'm, I'm always talking, but humble that you gave us that tour. I mean, yeah, you see these locations, and you know so much about it. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Okay. We're going to we're going to come off here now for a second. We are going to have a wee private talk in the background. Sorry, folks. We are like, um, you can't stop us. You can't stop us. <laughs> we're going to do that. We're into secrecy. Um, but I want to say uh, uh, thank you to everyone who watched, who commented, who liked, who shared, and we hope you enjoyed this fantastic. Uh, surprise show tonight. It was not a surprise, it wasn't coming on, but surprise for the tour he gave us. Uh, Robin, thank you so much for being a co host with me tonight. As always, Hard you're time. a bloody gem. Russell, I have no words. Thank I have you. no words. Uh, it was an honor. It was uh, a surprise uh, after a, probably a very tough week. It yeah. was nice to have this tonight. It was nice to have thank this you. tonight. It was. Um, Nice. It put a smile on my face, which was lovely. And and uh, and I don't mean just uh, of the whole history of the pri of the personal tour as well, of the relocations and your knowledge, and your work that you do, is uh, phenomenal. Okay. I am so looking forward. I'll be sitting at the door tomorrow with my dog, <laughs> waiting yeah. for the postman to come, and getting stuck into that book. Yes. And I just that's why you know we're going to have a little talk in the background, <laughs> the March one. Would you say that? <laughs> um, uh, Robin, anything you want to say to close off before we leave? Just thank you. It was a pleasure to meet uh, you, Russell. And of course, Jen, it's always great to be on your show. Thank you for thank inviting you. me. And I can't wait to, to come back again. I know we have an upcoming show together. So it's um, going to be do. exciting. Thank you. It's been a great day. We do. Russell, yourself, thank anything you. to say before we come off the live? Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to with me today. Yes, thank then. you. The thanks is all ours. We want to say thank you so much. We're going to be um, watching you. <laughs> we you. will be watching. Um, I'm going to bring us in the background, put off the intro, and then stay there, folks. We'll be back in two seconds.